coming to the clinical futures in unobstructed which can happen which is usually seen in infancy it is poor feeding failure to thrive recurrent respiratory tract infection due to increased pulmonary blood flow mild cyanosis and patient goes into congestive cardiac failure and it can be treated as a elective surgery coming to obstructed tapvc it is usually diagnosed in the neonatal period there is going to be pulmonary venous congestion pulmonary edema pulmonary hypertension cyanosis low cardiac output which leads to circulatory collapse and emergency surgery is required coming to the natural history most of the patient among patients of tapvc 50% if uncorrected die at 3 month and almost 80% die by end of 1 year it is asymptomatic at birth but more than 50% become symptomatic at first month of life and congestive cardiac failure develops at 6 months of age in severe obstruction pulmonary edema happens within 1 to 2 hours coming to the imaging modality in the chest x ray you have a few classical signs here you can have a figure of eight appearance this is a figure of eight appearance or what is called as a stoman appearance the right border is formed by the svc the left border is formed by the left vertical vein the upper border is formed by the left innominate vein and the body is formed by the right atrium so it is called the figure of eight or the stoman appearance in the x ray coming to echocardiogram the climb the classical parasternal view which is used to locate the pulmonary vein draining into the left atrium which is called the crab view the horn of the crab is formed by the svc and the la appendage and this legs and hands are formed by the four pulmonary vein how we are going to diagnose the tapvc in echocardiogram first and foremost is going to be your right ventricular volume overload and the most important thing is going to be the inability to find pulmonary vein entering the left atrium and your left atrium is going to be really small when compared to the right atrium and there is a echo free space behind the left atrium which is nothing but the pulmonary vein confluence this is the supracardiac tapvc here you can see the pulmonary vein confluence go via in the vertical vein into the innominate vein and then drain into the svc and here you can see the coronary sinus the pulmonary vein draining into a dilated coronary sinus and a asd is seen here and infracardiac here you can see the pulmonary vein confluence going via the vertical vein and drain into the ivc another important imaging modality which helps in the newborn period is the or going to be a ct angiogram in fact ct angiogram can show better image of the pulmonary vein anatomy when compared to echocardiogram here you can see all the four pulmonary vein drain and join into a vertical vein which drains into the innominate vein now coming to the perioperative period what are the various monitors which is required for surgical correction your electrocardiogram and pulse oximetry coming to the invasive uh, pressure monitoring you need an arterial line central venous pressure and nowadays while coming off la line because of uh, non compliant lav non compliant left atrium monitoring the la pressure through an la line will be very very important in weaning off cardiopulmonary bypass and your intraoperative echocardiogram to know the adequacy of the repair and whether your drainage is adequate or not and whether any obstruction is developing or not for that t is very very important your entitled carbon dioxide your oxygen saturation particularly the mixed venous oxygen saturation arterial blood gas serum lactate urine output and your core and peripheral temperature these are all various monitor which is required for surgical 